The Mustard Seed Media video podcast is sponsored and created by Mustard Seed Media, Inc., creating and developing media and web for tomorrow's Christian ministries. On the web at mustardseedmedia.com. Okay, so let's open up Drupal.org and let's do a little CMS magic. Okay, so let's start with this Photoshop document here and let's turn this thing into a website. Let's get right down to it and edit some CSS, shall we? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mustard Seed Media Video Podcast. My name is Bob, and this is the podcast where we talk about HTML, CSS, Drupal, all kinds of webby sort of stuff. Welcome. Uh, especially welcome if you haven't uh, watched the podcast before. Uh, if you uh, if this is the first one you're seeing, go back to mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast, and you'll find... Uh, some previous episodes. Uh, you can also make some comments on these uh, these episodes, ask some questions and stuff over there as well. I get asked a whole bunch uh, this question that we're going to address today. And it's a little tough to do in screencast, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. Uh, basically, the question is, how do we go from Photoshop to an HTML document? Uh, how do you sort of slice and dice your Photoshop comp up uh, and make it into a website? Uh, that's a that's a big question. I'm just going to uh, sort of approach it in a philosophical sense today. Uh, I do this different probably, or I think about this differently than other designers do. Uh, so take this as just one method or one way of thinking about stuff, uh, and it just happens to be the way I do it. So uh, we're going to address that today. Let's look at uh, first at the live mustardseedmedia.com website. Uh, this is what we're looking at. Uh, and this is what we are going to create out of Photoshop. Well, we're not going to do the whole thing today, but uh, just some philosophies. Here's the Photoshop document that it came from. Uh, you'll, the first thing you'll notice is that I didn't do the entire mock-up. Uh, this was for myself. Uh, I didn't. This wasn't for a client. So I knew what I was going to do in here, so I just sort of didn't take the time to do it because I'm lazy. Um, so uh, let, me, let me talk about my philosophies when I look at something like this and I think about converting it to HTML. Uh, a lot of people sort of think of their website as a big image that happens to have HTML stuff in it. Um, I look at things really the opposite. I, I think of this as um, an H. I, I think of my sites as all HTML, as much HTML and CSS as possible, and then I only use images as pieces to replace things that I want to look all fancy. Um, so, so that's sort of a difference. So, I, I don't really think of this as how do I slice this up and make it a website. Instead, I look at it and go, all right. Uh, a lot of this or most of this is going to be HTML. What are the absolute necessary pieces that I have to have as images? And then I'm going to Im uh, export those one at a time from Photoshop and use CSS to replace uh, individual HTML elements with those images. So I, I'm, I pretty much never, a lot of people are taking bigger images and they're cropping one image up into like four different slices or five different slices. Uh, there's some software out there that lets you do that. I pretty much never do that. Uh, instead, what I do is I look at individual items and export them individually and replace individual HTML divs or tag, uh, spans or uh, you know a tags or any other uh, actual elements with single images. Uh, so let's look at this comp and, and talk about uh, how I sort of look at it. Uh, the first thing I do is identify everything that's going to be HTML. Um, so things like these boxes, these are just going to be divs that are styled uh, to look like this. So they're going to be just uh, HTML and CSS. Obviously links like this that don't have a special font or anything. These are just going to be HTML. Uh, output from my content management system, uh, you know, sort of dynamic content like this is going to be HTML. Uh, a lot of the stuff, uh, text here, a lot of the stuff is going to be HTML. Um, and the idea is you want to lay out your HTML uh, or I want to lay out my HTML in a way that if all images can't load, I'm still getting all of my text, all of my content, uh, all of everything. And images are kind of like a bonus. Uh, images are, are a good thing and, and they make your site look nice, but they really shouldn't be necessary to view your site. So uh, basically I use uh, uh, CSS and HTML um, together to, uh, to make that happen. So let's look at these individual items one at a time. Uh, the first thing I always do is look at the background. So I'm gonna turn off all these other layers. And what we have is we just have a, a, a gradient that goes from a kind of a dark brown to a dark brown. Uh, so what I do is I look at this and I go, okay, this is going to be one file that's just going to repeat on my background. So then I would just take this, I would trim it down to one pixel high, 
so it's as small an image as possible. And then I would just do a sort of a file, save for web, save this as a JPEG, uh, and that would be one element. Then I could go, uh, we're going to jump back to the live site here, and we're going to look at Firebug just to see that that's exactly what I did here. And if we look at my body element, and we go over here and we look at background image, that's exactly what this image is. You'll notice it's 820 pixels by one pixel wide. Um, and then the background uh, on the outsides of this, uh, sort of over here as if you extend your browser window, uh, this is all just background color on either side. Uh, so I just took that image and I repeated it down, and you can see that it just sort of repeats down that way. So that's one image that I did that to. Um, let's go back to our Photoshop comp. Let me close this up a little bit. Now let's look at something like uh, the logo. So the logo here, uh, in this case, is just uh, just really two pieces of text, uh, but they're custom font and stuff like that, so I need to be able to export it as an individual file. So I'm just going to duplicate those two layers into a new layer, which you'll see it up here now. And then I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to just trim it and trim out all the transparent pixels. So it's just this size. And then I'm going to export for web, keeping my transparency. Uh, I don't remember actually the way I did this. I'll, I'll have to see in a second. But you could do it as a, actually, no, you can't do it as a transparent PNG uh, because that won't work in Internet Explorer as a background image for CSS. Uh, so you would need to do it as a transparent GIF and then uh, set your, you know, your matte color to that, that brown, uh, whatever that was. Uh, and then export it out. So if we go back to uh, the live site again and we inspect that element, you'll see that over here it really is just an H1 tag uh, with a class. Uh, and then I have an A link. And this is just HTML text that's in there. Uh, so in my HTML, there is no image. Uh, instead, if you look at my CSS, you'll notice that I did replace the HTML logo A tag uh, with the image I exported. Um, and then set up sort of everything about it to make that happen. If you uh, want to know how to do image replacement like this, uh, you can go back to episode one of this podcast, and that's actually what I showed. So then there's another image that I just replaced. Now, really, I just use that method, um, you know, of uh, let's, you know, let's look at another element. Uh, let's look at, uh, you know, this, this uh, element here, the Your Church Website is Lazy element. Uh, I just exported that, so I duplicate it into a new document. Uh, I trim it, so I got the exact size. Um, there, because this background was this blackish color, I just filled it with that, did the export, everything was good. Uh, so it's just one element at a time. I'm looking at, all right, what do I need to replace in CSS? Export that element, do the replacement. Uh, everything else is just totally relying on HTML and CSS to build this site. Uh, so when I when people ask, how do you go from Photoshop to HTML, it's kind of a tough question to answer because the answer really is, uh, well, just one image at a time. Uh, you know, everything else, every pretty much everything on this site is HTML and CSS, and then I just replace the individual things I need just by exporting individual images. Uh, so that's kind of a philosophical sort of approach to this whole thing. Hopefully it's helpful just in methodology, just in thinking. Uh, if you have questions, uh, you know, if you want to sort of get more in depth on this, maybe I'm not understanding people's question properly, um, but that's my philosophy of how I do it. Um, this was episode four, so if you go to mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast slash episode four, uh, you can leave me a comment, uh, ask me a question, tell me I totally didn't get your question uh, when you ask about this or, or whatever. But that's kind of my philosophy on this. Uh, also, just want to remind you about my other audio podcast, Geeks and God. Uh, you can go to geeksandgod.com. Uh, there's almost 100 episodes there now, hour long, uh, where myself and another developer uh, talk about uh, making websites for uh, churches and ministries. But a, a lot of the uh, stuff applies to everybody. So that's it for this week's podcast. Hopefully it was helpful. Uh, if it wasn't, just yell at me. You can do that. Just yell at your screen right now. Say that wasn't helpful, and I'll, I'll hear you. All right? Cool. We'll see you back next week on the Mustard Seed Media video podcast.